Today is a very exciting day because I'm currently stood on a new redstone component. This may look like a regular skulk sensor, but it's a skulk sensor with a purple thing attached to it. I do think they could have come up with a slightly more catchy name. Now this is crafted up by putting amethyst shards around the skulk sensor and then we end up with the calibrated skulk sensor and it's the calibrated part that's interesting because we can choose what sounds the skulk sensor is listening out for and we do that by running a signal strength into the side that matches the signal strength it would output dependent on sound which sounds really complicated i'll put some documentation down in the description but essentially a skulk sensor normally outputs a redstone signal strength of one when a player is walking around and you can see I've got a redstone signal strength of one running into the side of this calibrated skulk sensor which means that the calibrated skulk sensor is only going to listen to the sound of me walking and it's not going to detect the sound of anything else for example blocks being placed whereas you can see the regular skulk sensor on the right also hears this noise which just makes the calibrated skulk sensor a much more precise redstone component but that's not the only exciting thing introduced in this snapshot blocks of amethyst can now be used to pass along skulk vibrations which means that we can chain skulk sensors together and store the sound that was originally transmitted. So let's do some experiments. I have a button panel of five different buttons and I want each of these buttons to do different things. Not much point in having five different buttons that do the same thing, is there? Now I want to send these signals a long distance, making use of wireless redstone and I think using calibrated skulk sensors in the amethyst blocks, I should be able to do this with just one line. The first thing that I have to do is create five different sounds. Two of those sounds are pretty easy. We've got block activate and block deactivate. There are also two separate sounds that can be detected for block place and block remove or block break. And I'm really curious to see if powder snow counts as a block being placed or broken because then I can do it making use of dispensers. That would be very handy. So a block being placed gives out a signal strength of 13. So I've got a signal strength of 13 running into the side of this calibrated skulk sensor, which means it should only give a signal if a block gets placed and that's actually worked, which means the block breaking should also be working too. Fantastic. That's four of our five sounds done. I've discovered something slightly curious here. So if I fire a snowball into a block, it gets counted as a redstone signal strength of two which is an item landing. Now, if I remove that block, I would have thought it would then be a redstone signal strength of nine or 10, which is a block being activated or deactivated, but it actually gets counted as an item interaction, which is a redstone signal strength of three. So thanks to that discovery, I now have seven different buttons, all with different redstone signal strengths being output. The final one that I've got is a signal strength of 11 for blocks changing state. So I've got a composter being filled up. So now let's create the line of skulk sensors that these sounds are going to travel down. Because remember, Remember, we're not sending redstone signals here, we're sending sounds. This is like one of the first soundstone redstone contraptions. So I would say our line looks like it's long enough, so let's quickly make sure that we can actually send sounds down this thing. Yep, that is all working well. So now we need to decode the signal. Now there are a few ways to do this. I could actually use a regular skulk sensor and a red coder, but I think making use of the calibrated skulk sensors should make life a lot easier. Because all I have to do is run the redstone signal strengths that I've written over here, into the calibrated skulk sensors that I have placed over here. The difficult part is actually remembering what they are. So I've got three, I've got 12, 13, 9, 10, and 11. Now the moment of truth. Seven inputs, one wireless line, seven outputs. Okay, button number one. And we have activated output number one. Okay, what if I do the middle one? Let's see. It takes a little while to send the signal, but it is actually working. Everything is lining up properly. The right outputs are popping out on the other side. This is insane. This is wild. I'm able to send different redstone signals wirelessly through the same line. I don't even know what to say. That that is very fancy indeed. And it's also really quite simple. Like there's not much going on up here. Then there's basically nothing going on in the middle. And then the back end is just this. I do wish it was slightly faster, but still, this is super cool. But let's move on. I always love the idea of opening piston doors with skulk sensors. But the issue is if you made any other noise in the process of approaching the door, 
then the skull sensor would detect that and not open. That has since changed. Let me just build up a quick piston door. This should hopefully do the trick, right? Piston door is closed. Piston door, oh my goodness, it's not working. This is a lesson in always check your repeaters. Now with the timings correct, yeah, our door is closed, our door is open, everything is working beautifully. So let's connect this up to a little calibrated skulk sensor. So if I place this in like this, then we can run our comparator into the side. Now currently it is detecting every noise, including the sound of the redstone contraption, which is why it keeps opening and closing. Not ideal. This is why the calibrated skulk sensor is awesome, because we can get rid of that. So I've got a signal strength of one running into the side of our calibrated skulk sensor, which means this thing will only detect footsteps, which means we now essentially have an invisible pressure plate. Our door is only going to open when a player approaches it. Now this is pretty cool and incredibly futuristic, but there's also other use cases for this sort of redstone contraption. For example, what if I wanted to create a hidden piston door? Now normally this would require some form of secret activation device like a redstone torch key or throwing a specific item on the ground, but now we can actually do it with specific sounds. Preferably not footsteps, because footsteps are quite common in Minecraft, you know, it's not much of a hidden entrance if someone who's trying to find your entrance just walks by and it opens. Something more obscure will probably work better. So if I run a signal strength of five into the side of our calibrated skulk sensor, that means that our door should only activate if I equip a piece of gear, which is, is quite a funny idea. I mean, does, does anything happen when I gear equip? No, so I literally, it's only when I put equipment on, that's the only way that I can open this thing. That's actually super useful though, because everyone in Minecraft uses armor. You don't have to carry any specific item with you. You just take off and put on an item that you always have. I've been playing around with other ways to activate it. Teleporting is one of them, but the issue is, is that Ender Pearls, they don't actually count as teleportation. It's only Chorus Fruit, which is a very, very odd way to open your piston door and often negates the need to have the door because a lot of the time you'll actually teleport to the other side of the door which renders the whole thing a little bit pointless. There's also mobs and players getting damaged which could lead to some interesting ideas. Has that not- I shot myself for nothing. That should have worked. But it didn't work. Let's move on before I hurt myself further. I do want to stay on the topic of hidden devices though, because you can waterlog a skulk sensor and that will make it silent. You won't be able to hear the detection, which makes building traps and things like that a lot better because you don't hear that. But you see, there's a slight issue with the calibrated skulk sensor in that you need to run a redstone signal into the side of it for it to actually work. And obviously things like redstone circuits and things uh, they get washed away by water. Now it was worth checking to see if you could run redstone signals through blocks, but that obviously isn't the case. So I guess if you wanted to do a waterlogged one, I suppose you could build up something like this. It's like encasing, encasing it and then having the water drop down like that. And then you can run your redstone into the side. I mean, it definitely looks strange. And it's definitely quite a big and bulky thing, but if you want to build silent traps that will only detect a certain type of noise, then that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. Anyway, that's enough secret stuff. I think there are still some interesting use cases for these calibrated skulk sensors inside of redstone contraptions. The ability to send a signal between two redstone circuits without needing a wire to connect them could potentially make some big changes to redstone contraptions. I'm just gonna build up a super simple three by three piston door and then I'm gonna play around with this. And just to be incredibly clear, this is not the intended use case. Like I'm not saying that this will make this specific redstone contraption smaller or better or faster, but I'm just curious how well it could potentially work. Okay, so we've got the bottom section done. Now it's time for the top section and this is how I'm going to connect them. I need to think of a unique sound that has a specific redstone signal strength that isn't the activating or deactivating of blocks or anything that's going to happen in a regular redstone circuit and see if I can get that sound sent to the top of the redstone circuit without any wires. Now having experimented with this earlier, I would say item interaction is probably the best one to choose from because that doesn't happen regularly in redstone circuits and also with the player, because you have to remember, if I chose something that the player probably does as they're walking up to the door, then that means that that sound is also going to go into the redstone circuit, which wouldn't be great. So the firing of a snowball sounds pretty good to me. It's also going to sound pretty good to the calibrated skulk sensor. Yeah, this this is this is a little bit more challenging than I thought it might be. Oh gosh, this is such a mess. I mean, the door builders already laugh at me. This is this is laughable even by my standards. Please just remember, this is just a proof of concept. I just want to see if it would work, and in theory, there's no reason why it shouldn't. 
There we go. So... That's kind of interesting. I mean, this is broken. This, that's, that's not good. Thankfully, quite an easy fix. But other than that, this entire door, the entire top section of this door is activated wirelessly by firing a snowball down at the bottom of the door. That is quite curious. That could potentially, in a weird fringe case, solve a complicated redstone problem. I guess the only issue is the receiver itself has to be decently big and the sender isn't exactly small either. But who knows? It's another interesting tool in the redstone toolkit and I'm always open to more tools in the redstone toolkit. So I hope you found this video interesting. I certainly enjoyed making it. I look forward to seeing what the redstone community does with all of these new features. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Catch you in the next video. See ya.